So, you know, what, nationally people are asking this question. They're saying, you know, what can we do now that we have this administration that seems has values and policies that are so counter to some of the incremental progress that was being made in the last administration? And, you know, to that, my main response, which isn't going to be an answer to your question, is more of an answer to kind of a national audience, is that it's really, this problem is fundamentally a state county, city, and local problem, right? So 88% of prisoners nationwide are in state facilities, not federal ones. 85% of law enforcement officers nationwide are city, county, local law enforcement officers, not federal ones. So just like President Obama and Attorney General Holder got all the publicity in the last administration around criminal justice reform, but actually had a relatively small slice of the problem that they could affect. It's also true that Donald Trump and Jeff Sessions have, with all of their sort of retrograde policies that they're proposing, Sessions in particular, have a relatively limited ability to do damage. And that if the movement that we have built up at the state and local level nationally, that movement shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this system was built at the state and local level and it's going to have to be dismantled there. So I'm always, and this comes up a lot, you know, I'm spending the year out in California and a lot of Californians, especially in the Bay Area, whenever a social justice issue comes up, they always say, well, you know, that's, a, that's an important issue. If I lived in like a red state, if I lived in a Trump state, then maybe I would kind of need to work on that. But I live in liberal California, or I live in liberal New York. And what I want to say on criminal justice and mass incarceration is there is no liberal bubble. California has the second largest prison system in the country. New York, until recently, was one of only two states in the country to prosecute all juveniles age 16 and 17 as adults. So there, this is a national crisis. It's a crisis in every nook and cranny of our country. So we need to know our local legislators. We need to know the people in our state house. We need to know our local prosecutor. Now, okay, that's all well and good nationally, but in DC, it remains the case that through this unique and problematic system of the, the, the prosecutor, uh, reporting to uh, the president, um, what that means is that you do have this crisis. So there I would say it's, it's a little bit what I was talking about earlier about everybody operating in their, their sphere of influence. So one of the things that, that I noticed when writing this book is just like nobody said we want to we be the world's biggest jailer, especially nobody said that in African-American communities. I mean, I can't find a single example of people saying anything along those lines. But what's also true is there, there is a, this is gonna be kind of a harsh version of the statement, but I'll just put it this way. It's a, there's a sort of a pass the buck kind of attitude. There's a lot of people when confronted with the unjust system that say, like when I interviewed prosecutors about this book, they would often talk about the police. And the problem is that the police bring us these cases, and if the police would bring us a different set of cases, then we would prosecute a different set of cases. And then when I interview judges, they say, well, see, the thing is, the problem is the prosecutors, because the prosecutors prosecute these certain ty type of cases. And what I want to say is, yeah, that somebody else, how, how someone else is working or not working is always a problem. But what can you control? And as a judge, you have a lot of power. And if you don't like the way things are going, under D certainly under DC's sentencing system, you have a lot of authority to buck that. And that's true for everybody else in the system. So I guess what I want to say is, it's going to be bad. The question then, though, is, what can everybody else do in their sphere of influence to mitigate that harshness? And I think it's more than we sometimes assume.